Hey everybody, what is up out there? It's the one and only man behind the camera, ASMR. And this ASMR I'm going to be reading a story out of a world of full of spooky stories. And this one's called The Ghost and the Money Box. So just get back, relax, and enjoy. Young men knocked at the door of a farmhouse one day to ask for work. The farmer there had recently died, and his widow needed somebody to help in the fields, so he so she took him on. Before long the young men learned that the farm was haunted. The farmer's ghost was has been seen walking about the fields. A neighbor told him he was a rich man, but he kept all of his money secretly buried, and his wife doesn't know where, so she been left with nothing. <laughs> now they say he, re he returns from the dead at night to be near it. The young men felt sorry for the poor widow and wondered if the story was true. He decided to find out. He went into town and bought some sheets of tin and a length of white linen. First he made himself a pair of tin gloves and a any vest or a tin vest then a linen shroud to cover his body completely when it was dark he stood near the farmer's grave and waited playing with a silver coin in his hand at midnight the farmer's ghost rose out of the grave are you one of us? The ghost asked. Yes, the young man replied, and he held out his hand. The, the ghost felt the coat tin glove and nodded. Ye, you're a ghost, all right, he said. And he saw the silver coin. That's not much to come back for, he laughed. If you want to see real riches, come with me. He led the young man to the edge of the field and knocked over a mound of dirt. A mound of her birth. A large, large, large money box was buried in a hole beneath it. The ghost pulled the box out and opened the lid. Inside were a dozen money bags full of coins. The ghost tipped out the coins and asked the young man to help him count them. It took them a long time to count all the money. However, when they had almost finished, the young man knocked the piles of coins over with his hand, scattering them across the grass. You, are you sure you're one of us, asked the ghost with suspicious look. Of course, of course replied the young man, and he offered it his other hand to prove it. Once more the ghost felt the cold tin glove and was satisfied. But when the coins were piled up again, the young man knocked them over once more and they scattered across the grass. As before, the ghost became angry. I swear, you're alive, and he, you're here to betray me. He cried, and he grabbed the young man by the chest. To his surprise, it was hard and cold. You see, I am just like you, the young man assured him. With a scrowl, the ghost 
almost collected up his coins again, packed them into the money box, and buried it back in the earth. So where is your grave? He asked. On the other side of the church. The young man replied, Then you then you go in first, said the ghost, still eyeing him with suspicious. No, you go first, insisted the young man. The ghost wouldn't give away, so they argued back and forth until Abraham dawn broke and the ghost had to jump into his grave. Then the young man immediately dug up the money box and took it back to the farm. There he had hid it in a barrel of water to hide the smell of earth and went about his work. That night the ghost was furious to discover that his money box had been stolen. He went to the farmhouse and sniffed around for the smell of fresh earth, but he couldn't detect anything from his bed. The young man heard a blood gurgling cry and knew his trick had worked. The next day, the young man gave the farmer's money to his widow. A year later, they were married and lived happily ever after. Reading's over.